Greetings, welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ecole, my co-host as always, Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. I was really ready to be on board at this point. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it's getting better, it's getting better. Got some red flags in this one for me. You got canon issues. Canon I'm, issues. I'm going to argue about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't like that I have to argue about it. I think it would have been better to go about this a different way. But we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. So this episode starts out with canon issues, so I'm gonna red flag this shit. <laughs> March yourself back out that door, and I won't have to have you on my or Luna's conscience. No, 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 no. Hey, hello, girl. Stay. Good girl. I think time zero should have occurred. Because we're just, okay, we're just going right we're going into, straight it. into it. Oh, right into it. So, All right. The future hasn't changed yet. That happens in three days. So mm -hmm. regular timeline should mm -hmm. be what it is. And Picard should have gone back for time zero. Guinan should know who the fuck he is. Okay, yeah. So just to recap, we're talking about like, because we've seen in TNG, Picard goes back in time and meets Mark Twain and Guinan. Yeah. So Guinan should 100% in the year 2024 be like, oh shit, it's you again. God, you, you're old, but um, yeah, it's you again. Okay, all right. So... That was definitely my initial thought, um, but it seems like what they're going with is since they've traveled back in time from the bad future, in the bad future there never was a Picard that did the time zero, but bad Picard never went back in time and met Guinan. Bad Picard probably doesn't even know Guinan. See, I just think like if you're traveling back <clears throat> before it changed to bad universe, mm -hmm. that it should be still normal universe. It is normal universe, but and nothing, none of the, occurred. no one from good universe has traveled back in time to influence this time. Because good, good future doesn't exist, so no one can travel back from good future. Okay, well then, um, I'm gonna red flag that too, and a black one. Yeah. Um, Double dumbass. Double dumbass. I will. I will 100% give you this. They have to pick one. Yeah. Uh, because we start off this uh, this episode with a fantastic scene that I really enjoyed, uh, where Seven's giving the same punk from the voyage home. It's the same guy. I, I don't know if he was listening to the same th song. I think I'm it was pretty sure one. it's just very similar, if not the I same. I think it was "I still hate you." Yeah. Instead of "I hate you," so we'll, we'll, I'll go back and check. But it's the same actor doing the same thing. So why is he? Why is he all nervous? Why is he worried about his neck? If, you know, Kirk and Spock didn't come back and beat the shit out of him, why did he? Because <laughs> if, if there's no Time Zero Picard, there's definitely no Voyage Home Kirk and Spock. Yeah, so we already have a conflict of interest. Yes, we have, you, we have to pick one. Yeah. We can't do both, so. I mean, I guess Confederate Kirk and Spock could have come back and like put this guy in the fucking hospital or something. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just it's left to too many things unexplained. And here we've got, and I actually thought they did a pretty good job, but recasting Guinan so that they had a younger Guinan who doesn't look like younger Guinan. I did not expect this. I don't hate it. I didn't I don't like the casting, it. but yeah. I am like, why did we see older Guinan? And now we're seeing younger guy who's not the same younger guy. <laughs> yeah, this was 100% of the... Well, I guess I was right for the wrong reasons, because I'm like, there's no way guy needs to watch her, because they're not going to yeah. pay to de-age her for an entire season. Yeah. But now it is Laris is the watcher. Yeah, well, that was my theory, wasn't it? I think I said was it? Laris. Laris. I think it was her and uh, Brent. Okay. <laughs> Those are our two options. Yeah. Uh, I didn't expect Laris to be human, though. And lack of Irish? I didn't hear an Irish accent there. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where they're going with that. Um, but yeah, because the, the, the reason this is bothersome is because there I don't see why there would have been anything wrong with Guinan just going, you again? <laughs> yeah. This guy? <laughs> You'd be like, yeah, I remember me from Mark Twain. I need your help again. She'd be like, Jesus Christ. And it could have been fine. Uh, but they don't want to scare off the new viewers, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the problem. Is there's always somebody that's not going to read it. 
even the actress that plays New Guy and like it was a big TNG fan and went up to the writers but shouldn't she know him because mm-hmm. of Times Arrow? Yeah. And they're like, well, and they gave similar theory to what you said. And I was like, well, do I have faith in what the writers of these shows do? And I mean, you know what? I, I feel like that actually makes sense that, you know, because the future, that future doesn't exist, that Picard can't come back and meet Guinan. Um, but I would have liked it, like, for Picard to figure that out, even if that's what you're going to go with, like, explain that. <laughs> because yeah. for me who's watched the show, that's a really obvious issue. And I feel like this could have just been sidestepped. Like what's wrong mind. with them recognizing each other? Yeah. What's wrong? What does that? What harm does that cause? I don't think it, it Not changes anything. Conflict. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not enough of the same. Like he followed her around for the entire <clears throat> time, going, "But you have to stay." Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on my old Picard. You can't even tell me your name. Well, if I say more, I risk compromising your part. You might have thought of that before you started harassing me in my bar. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I I had no choice. Yeah, I thought the actress did a good job for a guy, and but like maybe just recast her at the start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I liked seeing Whoopi, but like I didn't like her explanation for getting older. Just that was silly. They didn't need to explain yeah, it. Just they don't they say it. Yeah. And you know what? I would have accepted it if she just no, just looked like this. Just was like Whoopi, yeah. yeah. It's just Whoopi again. Mm-hmm. So it's by changing the look and doing, well, we needed her to look younger and completely different. <laughs> Actually, they could have fixed it totally. Like I, 100% on board with these Picard writers. They could have just been like, my species generally chooses if they want to look different sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, your age thing, that's a great line. So. <laughs> Why not? So uh, this episode is pretty much uh, Boar Queen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Flirty. This- Join me, Agnes. She's just join super, me. She's just super flirty. That's yeah. all she knows how to do. It's just she's assimilated the sex drive of every species. Right? <laughs> God damn, that's a thirsty queen. <laughs> and I trust you to help. Beware the species that has not yet purged that word. They're simply begging to be conquered. Help, trust. I guess Agnes is just so much better than every single race you've assimilated. Agnes is just like, she's in control here. She's like, yeah, I'll totally talk to you and stuff if you help me out. And then <laughs> she's just like, bye, loser. Yeah, thanks for fixing the transport. Yeah. So, uh, I shut off all the systems again. Yeah, you, gross. Like, I never talked to you. Yeah. <laughs> ah, she's the boar queen. Show her some respect. Nah, they're totally going to make out again. <laughs> Uh, we got Rios in prison. Yeah. Little holding cell with his yep. uh, sexy doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, I love her still. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sad, sure we'll see her more. Sad to see her go back to her <clears throat> job. <laughs> <laughs> and him, you know, off to sanctuary. Yeah. So I guess there is no Cisco in this timeline. Yeah. Unless there is. No. Who it's... knows? <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling, Chris. <laughs> I have a feeling there's constantly going to be each episode. Well, that can't have happened, but then why did this happen? (laughs) I'm coming into sickbay tomorrow for my physical. 1500. Lieutenant Watley. That was my great-grandmother's name. No one ever met my great-grandfather. This could be a predestination paradox. This reminds me of when they did uh, the, the Trials and Tribulations episode, and Worf just looked like Worf. And then later down the line, this caused so many fucking canon problems. <laughs> be like, is this what Klingons look like, or isn't it? Now when we do Enterprise, we have to explain why Klingons okay. look like this. Here's my big uh, difference opinion for that, is when Worf said it, mm-hmm. and he's just like, we don't talk about it. I was 100% fine oh, with that. That was fine. Because now- I was just like, yeah. It's because you have makeup effects now, yeah, and that's why the joke. Klingons look better, yeah, and it's, it's funny. It, it, it's great as a joke, but you've also entered it into canon. And now you go back in time and do a prequel series, and you're you're just going to do Klingons in the modern way, but then someone comes up and says, um, actually, in Deep Space Nine, um, season four, yeah, episode yeah. 12, yeah. Um, we learn that Klingons actually, actually look like that. Um, but... Enterprise fixed that. They did. And they, they but what? Granted, but, <laughs> that was a, that was quite the arc. You had the uh, yeah. You had Malik and his like genetically engineered people and the Doctor mm-hmm. and Flux and all that. That was cool. And yeah, it was quite the arc and yeah, great storytelling. 
But they fixed it. It yeah. was fine. And then Discovery came along and yeah. just did it It just again. keeps happening. And I'm like, so we've established... <laughs> God, I don't need to yell about this again. I feel like we spent the entirety of Discovery Seasons 1 and 2 yelling about this, and I'm over it. Well, anyway, Guinan. I think Star Trek fixed it properly in the originals, but New Trek doesn't give a fuck. Okay. It created a mess to explain this thing that they didn't need to change in the first place. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Is where I'm at. Understandable. All right. So, Seven Can't Drive. Seven Can't Drive. I was trying to or count... Or she the... can drive really good. I was trying to count the nines on her license plate, because it was like all nines. I'm like, are there seven nines? I don't know. It was going too Even fast. Guinan had, uh, he's pointed out season two, uh, episode one. Yeah, her license plate was SO2EO1. Yeah. People love to put Easter eggs on license plates. Oh, this, this entire episode probably had a dozen Easter eggs at least. Yeah. You chose the 15th volume of the Britannica and a Pinot Noir, 1915. We haven't uh, uh, talked about the card. We, uh, uh, 15s. Yeah. yeah, I felt like that was a bit of a leap, um, just going, it's the 15th. Yeah, so I mean, the 15, 15 could book. mean anything. And the 1915 of, yeah. the, of the one. But well, we know 15 is important, but we don't know, like, why. That was a... That's, they had no proof. They just jumped onto that, and it's a TV show, so that's what it's going to be. But, like, <laughs> it could have been anything. Um, so... The Watcher, we discussed that. It was... Do we think this has anything to do with, like, Gary Seven or whatever? Um, Is that the same thing? I don't know, but in the end, shouldn't have Daniels have fixed all this? <laughs> <laughs> no, because like... Oh, so I think I've mentioned this before, but we in Voyager we get like the temporal police, right? Yeah. And it's like, time police, you're under arrest. And But there was timey-wimey bullshit. Like, they're protecting whatever timeline it is they're from. That doesn't... Just because temporal police exist doesn't mean you can't do timey-wimey bullshit. It just means you can only do the timey-wimey bullshit that ends up leading to the timeline that creates temporal police. And from that point forward, the temporal police are going to shut everything down. Yeah, and, you know, also, like, the, the head guy in charge of temporal police became corrupt and had to arrest himself. Yeah. And, funnily enough, he was also the guy in charge of the time travel in Time Cop. Mm-hmm. Was he actually? Yeah. Neat. Good movie. Which one of those came up first? Um, ooh, tough. Both in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I want to say Time Cop. Really? Maybe that's why they cast him. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Got I've experience. experienced Time Cop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have John claude Van Damme's kicks, but whatever. It is fine. Uh... <laughs> it's not too late. The problem isn't time. It's not too late. It's you. It's not too late. And we really fucking hate ice, um, well, which makes sense. Okay, we, we argued about um, Guinan, but yeah. we argue about why her bar is there and why she's back. Oh, there just okay, yeah, no, okay, so no matter what side of this you're on, whether that explanation works for you or not, there is. The bar should not be 10 forward. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. What did she go to the Federation? She'd be like, I demand to set up a bar on the 10th level forward section of your ship. Why well, demand? She would just ask the car because they're old friends. Mm-hmm. Be like, hey, I really like this street name. Yeah. <laughs> That's 100% bullshit no matter way, what it way was, it was. It was amusing in the future. Oh, yeah, it was amusing in the future. But in the past, the fact that she would still have a fucking bar that looks identical, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I did uh, feel sad, though, when she was giving the dog away. Yeah, and that's the same kind of dog that Picard has, right? Yeah. Yeah. You go home with your Uncle Dale. He'll take good care of you. <laughs> Come here, baby. Sad, sad. Yeah. Well, final thoughts? I liked the episode. I mean, we're going to spend the entire time yelling about canon issues because that's that's the kind of nerds we are. And yeah. that was definitely the... I was watching this and oh, almost really, yelling at really the TV. I really liked your, uh, your argument of uh, Spock and Kirk going back for the bully guy. Yeah. Like, why? Like that's fine. If you want to say that's the explanation, that works for me. I, I would have liked that to actually be discussed in the show. But that explanation, you know, it's... 
it's not what I really want, but it's neat enough. And that works fine. But you can't do the gag with the Voyage Hub. You can't. <laughs> <They're> not, no. <laughs> you have to pick one. Um, yeah, he should have been defined to be like, screw you. Yeah. Also, I'm much older now. <laughs> yeah. And then Rafi could have shot him. It's like, like, I really like that song. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that was a great gag yeah. at the beginning. It was very lower decks. It was very lower decks. Was I it 30 that. years later? I, even from Voyage Home, when they were back in there, they were in there for the 90s or 80s. 80s? Yeah. 40 years later, and he still fucking likes that song. It's a good song. <laughs> it's a man, man knows what he likes, right? Yeah. Man knows what he likes. Sits on the bus. Mm -hmm. Still has like a cassette player. <laughs> he's not in San Francisco anymore, though. He's, oh, yeah, he's oh, he left. changed cities. Not LA. Yeah. Thought it was safe to ride the bus again. I'm in a Maybe. different city. <laughs> Maybe it was just a really long bus ride. Yeah. A lot of stops. Mr. Ramirez, paperwork came through. Uber's waiting. Look, I would like no, to go help on, you. Go on, please. You've done enough for me already. So thank you. If you ever need anything. There are a lot of interesting things in this episode. Uh, again, I, I think uh, Rios is a strength to this show. Uh, I hope the Doctor continues to join. But oh, we didn't talk about Q at the end. Yeah, well, I mean, I thought we'd sit in separate rooms and pretend we we're talking to each other like Q was doing. I was like, is he talking to the girl? That makes no fucking sense why he's talking to so the, the girl. So the girl, do you know who the girl was? No. That was, she's a Picard. Uh, she's Rene Picard that Picard mentions in his speech to Starfleet Academy. Rene says his brother. Yeah, it's also a girl's name. She's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the card can become his own great, 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 great grandfather. I'm sorry, O'Brien, I must sleep with her. It might be the only way I get created. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Interesting. So, yeah, I'm not sure who, who Q was supposed to be talking to, but she's reading a Dixon Hill novel, which is cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of those dozen references. Um, I always expected that uh, Soji was going to be like Picard's daughter and that after like two or three uh, seasons, they were just going to hand it off to Soji and she would continue the series as mm -hmm. Picard. Mm -hmm. But uh, nope. 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 So, yeah, three seasons and done. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you nope. next week.